So first, I do want to say, um, watch Pulp Fiction. It's a damn good movie. And also, I was going to do another skit, but I'm embarrassed to do it. I won't do the twist. And also, I need, like, a full body thing so you can see me do, see my movements and stuff, you know? So, because that's the point of a dance. But I'm not going to do that. So, um, watch Pulp Fiction and... No, watch this video, then watch Pulp Fiction, and you'll understand more about this video. Yeah. Have you ever loved a movie the more you think or work on it? Pulp Fiction is that movie for me. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brother Pulp Fiction is the creator of many memes this is my first time talking about anything that has a meme but that's not the focus of today but on the talk of memes, what movie can be better than the movie that created some of the best memes ever? I mean, where's the lie that I'm speaking? No lie detected. No lie detected. No lie detected. No lie detected. As you can see, there is no lie that was detected. But it's time to be more serious, even though my voice is monotone as hell in this video. Pulp Fiction is considered one of the best movies ever by many. Do I agree? I can't say right now. I need to watch Taxi Driver and some other greats before I can determine it for you. But I can say this movie is a damn good one. I can proudly say that everything in this movie was done with heart. The acting was done with heart. The direction was done with heart. The sound was done with heart. The characters were created with heart. The script was written with heart. And you know damn well that the comedy is golden. Do you remember what I played in the beginning? No? Well, really quick, I want you to only listen to this acting scene, since I don't want to be copyrighted again, since my Once Upon a Time in Hollywood video was ruined because of it. What? What country are you from? What? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of. They speak English and what? What? English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Yes. Then you know what I'm saying. Yes. Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. He's, he's black. Go on. He's bald. Does he look like a bitch? What? Does he look like a bitch? No! Then why you try to fuck him like a bitch, Brent? <laughs> I'm sure most or even all of you can tell that scene was done by Samuel L. Jackson. You can hear his heart when saying this. No, you can hear the character, and that's what great acting is. But it's not like he was the only good actor, of course. Everyone on, is on point, and great. John Travolta plays Vincent phenomenally and perfect. Why would you? I heard you did a pilot. That was my 15 minutes. What was it? It was a show about a team of female secret agents called Fox Force 5. What? Fox Force 5. Fox is in we're a bunch of foxy chicks. Force is in we're a force to be reckoned with. And 5 is in this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm a person who sees that many things can't be done without a partner in crime. Or I should say, friend. The actual beginning of this movie has Samuel and John just talking about how they should have brought shotguns. Then right after they switch the conversations, they're talking about foot massages and how their boss almost killed a person for that foot massage. But then we learn that they don't even know if that's a fact or not. They gossip and talk. That's what friends do or even co-workers do. That scene had really intrigued me. But I believe sometimes likable characters is more impressive and more important than a story in my opinion. But that's only if you know... Your story is valid and officially good. 
examples venom a lot of comedies and even spider-man 3 anyways we see that jules and vincent are close enough as a team that they can consider each other friends they respect each other which is often said they have a great chemistry and are able to bounce off each other in their conversations like they've been best friends for a lifetime and it's amazing to witness it really is something to see but as i said before the acting wasn't the only beautifully thing done right in this movie Direction in this movie is very different than most movies and I love that. When watching the movie, you learn it's split into parts like a TV show, chapters if you want to be specific. This is not the only thing that was creatively done different than traditional movies. The way this movie was organized is something I haven't seen in years or even ever. We start off the movie at the ending like many movies have done, but then right after we switch chapters and we are introduced to our protagonist in a car. But the reason I say I never seen it done like this is because whenever I did see it, something was being said and there's something worded like this is stated. I bet you're wondering how I got in this predicament. <laughs> whoa, whoa. See that guy right there? Looks like he's hit rock bottom. Well, that guy's actually me. Believe it or not. Now, I bet you're wondering how I got in this wacky situation. It all started in the summer of 86. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. And then they rewind the clock. What I also found cool is that we aren't in the eyes of the main people we stay with through the story like Vincent or Jules. We are in the eyes of Honey Bunny and whoever the other guy was. I love this scene because it feels like it was done smoothly. No! I know it was done smoothly and that's what makes the scene 10 to 50 times better. You can see by that, that it was with heart, as I said before. This script area will be more on the short side for reasons, but I want you to see, listen, and look at the script and how specific it was. This can be seen as storyboarding, but I see it as script coverage. This is covering everything on how it will go and how exactly he wants it to go. This makes me love the scene more because it shows Tarantino cared and had a vision that wasn't going to change. That's how you know he put heart into the script and the direction of the movie. When you have a script and a story, you want it to not change no matter what others say unless they will make it better or even 50 times better. Jules Jules is a character that is going through a dilemma. He wants to move on to following God on a religious state. He decides this after gunshots miss him and Vincent in the apartment scene. As I'm sure you know, he knows at least a little of the Bible and that one line he always gives gives him a whole different life of meaning in a way. And it's actually something you could think about on your own on your own time. He later decides to quit for Marcellus and learn, and you learn why. This causes you to not see him later on during the movie, but I do have to say this is actually challenging to write who these characters are because I see as something you are able to understand the more you look at the movie, and yeah, so I'm just gonna give you the basic analyzation of the characters in a way, and yeah, that's basic equipped for Jules, so. Vincent is my favorite character just because he got a big old head, but also because he just seems interesting and I would love to know more about him and of course the rest of the cast. Vincent in this movie had basically just came back from Amsterdam. He was there for three years and just came back. In a way, he is a friend you haven't seen in years. He's the friend we all had that left and you never knew when they would come back. That's the way he is to Marcellus and that's the way I look at him also. He is also a man who wants respect. He is a man of respect, if I use that phrase Let properly. Call appear to be normal. Jimmy, lead the way. Boys, get to work. Please would be nice. Come again? I said a please would be nice. Get it straight, Buster. I'm not here to say please. We will now talk about the poster child of Pulp Fiction, Mia. Mia is Marcellus's wife. She's a drug addict, which I believe Marcellus knows because 
She states this. This was said after Vincent saved her from an OD. She's not only an addict, she's also a failed actor in a way. She acted on a television pilot show. I definitely don't know if I used that properly considering I never heard of a pilot show. Since I don't know what pilot show is, I really, really doubt you know what a pilot show is. So let me tell you in a minute. A television pilot is a standalone episode of a television series that is used to sell the show to a television network. Basically, it's a way to see what to put on TV and basically why the original Teen Titans went off air and why Teen Titans Go is on air. But let's get right into her husband. Marcellus. Uh, Marcellus is a crime lord boss, I guess I would say. He is a man who is all about the money and about his wife, of course. I mean, I stated he almost killed over a foot massage earlier. I mean, that's a lot of info about him, but I can also say he is a man who would pay someone to lose a fight, so your opinions are up to you on that, but he is um, also one hard, no homo black man. Uh, I can say that because I'm black. <laughs> I mean, I had to put Butch and Marcellus right next to each other. If you watched the movie, you would understand. But now we are in our final character, which is Butch. Butch is a boxer. Marcellus paid him to lose his boxing match. That's his character arc. He is also a descendant of a World War II fighter. I remember this because it had a funny scene, which I can't post because it's too long. But Marcellus and him are not best friends at all. This was because... Butch accidentally, quote unquote, killed his opponent in the ring, knowing he did that he has to start going on a run. Oh, and he goes out with a French woman, if you care. But to describe his personality, I would say he's a good man in a way. I mean, he saves Marcellus in the end. Take that information, how you interpret him as a good person. And yeah, that's Butch and Marcellus. They don't really have anything together or separate they're kind of a together thing i don't know what i remember is not that much about them don't remember special scenes with them too except uh, maybe a couple but uh yeah i think the strongest characters in this movie were definitely vincent and jules third is mia i guess because she's more interesting than Butch and Marcellus, so that's a character ranking for you, I guess, too. Yeah. <laughs> First, I want to say sorry if my voice sounded different in the videos because I was getting sick and stuff. Two, I want to give a shout out to Dawood M, uh, Hassan Hamid, and Channel Pup. All their channels will be in the description. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, press the like button and share to whoever else you think would enjoy my content. And um, also, sorry if some things are a little bit done differently is because I'm not very good with copyright strikes and I work on phone so it's even harder to edit and stuff so yeah and I think that's all I want to say for now and um I love you and thanks for 30 subscribers over 30 subscribers in under three months I think yeah so great and keep sharing because it does help me and I do want to work on more content and I think the next video I will be working on is maybe Honey Boy or some other movies by Quentin Tarantino. And I will be doing some collab videos with some other YouTubers hopefully soon. So, yeah.